So today I'm excited to announce we've got Paul from London over in the UK who's made something quite unique that we don't often see in the JavaScript community, some custom hardware powered by TensorFlow.js. Now personally, I love seeing JS devs tinkering with hardware, especially with the emerging web standards coming out for WebUSB, WebBLE, and so on and so forth. And I'd love to see more of this stuff coming out. So Paul, tell us more about who you are and what you've made. Yes, hello, Jason. Thanks for having me on your show. And uh, yeah, so we've made a, um, well, I suppose you could call it a little robot. Um, and its function is to um, keep a, follow a person uh, and keep that person in the middle. So it's like your robotic camera man or camera person, I should say, these days. But uh, it's, uh, and yeah, it's, uh, uh, it's designed for a sports setting, particularly. My background's largely tennis uh, and, and, and IT as well. I, I, I did a, uh, master's degree computer science and computer aided product design long long time ago I didn't finish them mind <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and um, but but while I was on those courses I, I developed some a lot of interest and knowledge in sort of IT sector and I kind of put that together with my sports background and and trying to solve a problem largely in the tennis world where recording people for video analysis is tough because there's not only usually obviously two people playing or four people playing not usually a spare camera person so it's for that function mainly, but it's, it's it it reaches you know many cross cuts, many different sectors. So it's yeah, it's interesting to see where it can go. Awesome. And what inspired you to kind of make this project in the first place? Like what 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 set you off on this journey? Well, largely a little bit of intrigue as to whether it could work because uh, I've been using TFJS in a number of uh, different capacities. The, the the business behind this is a sports video analysis business, which is web browser based, and that uh, we we're using TensorFlow JS models on there, um, body pics, uh, uh, pose net, you know, for the uh, for pose estimation and, and semantic segmentation. So we've got quite familiar with them anyway on a Cordova-based, browser-based app, uh, and obviously on the web as well. So we um, we wanted to try this out using the JS technology. We also built it in TensorFlow Lite with Flutter as well as a comparison, but, uh, but largely that, and we've been really pleased with the early work. We've got a second prototype coming very soon. This is the original. And um, and this new prototype's quicker, faster. It's got a few tweaks on the firmware, and it's all in all, it's uh, it's uh, it's going to be exciting to see w where it can go. And, and where we're trying to get it is to try in the hands of de JS developers and uh, and people gen using it for its intended purposes. Awesome. So essentially, it can capture, I guess, any sport play uh, that you might want to do. Tennis is the use case here. Um, and it will follow the person around the court as they're playing. That's basically the idea of this. Yeah, so it's it's a robotic device. Um, it's got a stepper motor inside, um, Bluetooth module. Uh, it's got an infrared uh, sensor as well in case you want to use a manual control. So th the way it works is that the the robot itself, the um, the the firmware on the microcontroller um, uh, connects with uh, the Bluetooth on the app. Uh, so we just hacked up a, a Bluetooth GitHub for a Bluetooth plugin on, on the, we're using Cordova as the kind of, um, you know, web browser based app uh, that, that uses the JS. And uh, so we've kind of connected via the Bluetooth. Uh, so that syncs obviously the phone, the device, and obviously the, um, uh, the robot together. And then, uh, and then, yeah, with our app software that we've coded, we, um, ping signals to the, um, the the microcontroller on the firmware and those signals will be just a string basically kind of uh, integers and um, characters and it'll say like CW clockwise um, 25 25 degrees speed one two or three um, and uh, I mean the latest um, uh, prototypes unfortunately not here right now that they've got seven speeds and a better firmware so we're we're hopeful that we can even improve quite a bit on that. Um, but so with that string, it will then move the device to keep the person in the middle. So it's always going to keep the person in the middle. And then as soon as that's done, it will it, it will move on to the next uh, command. Awesome. So before we dive deeper into the technology here, maybe we can see um, a live demo of you demonstrating this. Yeah, so uh, OK, I'll, I'll turn this around. We're looking at you at the moment, Jason. But uh, <laughs> OK, I'll turn this around. So. So yeah, you can see that there. Can see that. I'll move this out of the way. 
and um, so if I move back a bit and then this should just cool. follow yeah just turning and, around as you walk around the room yeah so I can probably walk out the door even and it's, <laughs> and it's following me around in the latest version that we're just about to hopefully release with the new firmware uh, on the new prototype it'll be much much quicker there was um, an oversight we didn't include in the firmware uh, an interrupt stop signal so it means that when we pass a signal, uh, the string, it's got to complete that before it receives the next signal of the location of the of the mobile net image classification model that is sending um, where the person is. So with the new version, it'll simply, as soon as the person goes out the middle third, it'll just use a, a command of move left or move right, and then it will stop at the point it, it comes back in. So if it's mid, if it's mid kind of... Uh, moving, it can kind of pause faster and start going in the correct direction. Yeah, it just means right now there's a little bit of lag, but we've addressed that in the latest version. And uh, uh, and and yeah, if you keep following, if you keep following us, um, I don't know on on some uh, our social media, you'll see the latest versions. And uh, say not ready for this uh, presentation, but uh, but it, you'll be you'll see at some point. Cool. So diving into the tech stack a little more, Ben. So you're using TensorFlow.js and one of our, is it our pre-made models or did you kind of customize one of our models with your own data? Yeah, no, or? it's basically just an out of the box uh, mobile net V2. Um, uh, and yeah, we, 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 we actually coded two apps. We coded TensorFlow Lite with a Flutter base. Uh, we just wanted to do some comparisons, either like performance or the UI. Uh, and then we've got a Cordova based uh, platform that uh, we're kind of obviously a uh, sort of wrapper app browser based wrapper app where we've just got JS plugins in, in that and uh, yeah it's just a straight out the box tensorflow uh, uh, model and uh, yeah the mobile net v2 is really lightweight that was the key thing because we wanted to maybe use uh, sort of probably uh, pose net something like that because I think it looked nicer to have like the skeleton following but uh, but it is such a good lightweight model, the, the mobile net image classification model. Uh, and also it presented the option as well, if a further point we wanted to adjust the, uh, uh, the app to maybe follow a dog or a cat, or just, it gave us more flexibility to maybe follow other things in, in the code uh, at some other That's time. That's awesome. So it's easy to upgrade these things too. And of course your, your use case here is sports, but even like security cameras for the home, like the fact that you just, you know, monitor you going around your room right now that's really cool too so there's many applications you could like maybe spin it off as well in other ways which is kind of cool yeah absolutely yeah it's a, the, i mean uh, the, the 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 use cases are tremendous i mean just uh, i was watching one of your tensorflow previous show and tell videos and some of the incredible things the other community members are doing and i'm kind of watching those thinking but let me just say i was watching one from a, Ga a guy called gant laborde and he got this yeah. kind of presentation uh, he was doing presentations and was able to test the mood of the his audience. Yes. Yeah. And uh, I thought, what a fantastic project that was. And then I suddenly thought, wow, if Gant had this device programmed it into <laughs> his kind of presentation, so that he's moving the, the device is moving around, keeping Gant in the middle while um, right, right, that's true. Yeah, it could be well, like, uh, even like cooking. Then he's going to get more smiley faces. <laughs> he's going to get more smiley faces. <laughs> and so yeah, the, the use cases it's crossing over to different projects. Uh, uh, it's quite exciting, really. So I'm also curious about any challenges you faced whilst making this project and how you overcome them as this is quite a unique project. Yeah, probably the initial challenge was um, trying to match up what uh, the camera field of view sees compared to the, uh, the, the obviously the model itself. Um, so we tried to, uh, originally we tried trigonometry to work out the, the angles and everything and the field of view of, the, of, of each smartphone, because obviously they're all going to be different. Uh, that produced some funny results. I don't know whether it was our coding or or, um, or whether uh, I think pretty trigonometry is a pretty accurate uh, form of uh, measure and angles, though. So it must have been us. But uh, in the end, we decided on um, we actually wrote a function to return the pixel count of the device and its configuration. And then with that total pixel count and its configuration, we then split the screen into th um, three sections, obviously thirds. And then the middle third, we said basically, if the um, mobile net model is in the image in the middle third, then stay where you are. If it enters the left or the right, then we'll ping a, ping a signal of how many degrees it needs to 
travel and how quickly um, in order to get that person back in the middle. So that's that was quite a challenge that we uh, we got we got there with that. So I guess um, I'm from what you said there. I'm guessing by having speaking into thirds, it only ever moves when things actually start going off to a certain direction. Whereas before, I guess it was maybe just too precise. It was just kind of updating all the time. Leading to some yeah, that, a lot think, of movement or something. Yeah, it, it mm. could be. Um, I mean, our new uh, prototype coming will have a, a, a firmware amend that will basically have an interrupt signal. So we don't need to be processing sp strings, uh, integer and character strings that is, is in a code that we fire to the to the robot that basically will turn it so many degrees to the the left or the right. Uh, the, the new one will have an interrupt signal where we can say stop. So it'll basically simply say, um, are you in the middle section? Great. If you're not, then move on going. So it'd be nice and smooth. And then it will stop when it comes back in the middle section. So that's that's something we're looking forward to coding into the next prototypes. It'll be here any any day. Cool. So I, I, I know this is a hardware demo, but is there a website that people watching right now could learn more about this project if they want to find out more? Uh, yeah, the the website is um, Ava dot website. Uh, that's the uh, that's the website where you can find a little bit more about it. There's uh, there's the social media tags of Ava videoing on uh, Twitter, and there's a Facebook page for Ava. It's called Ava. We called it Ava because it's we called it the automated videoing assistant. Uh, so that's so search for automated videoing assistant Facebook, Twitter, and you, you'll find us. And uh, and we're also going to trying to get this off the ground on a Kickstarter campaign, because right now we've just got a bunch of prototypes, and we want to try and get this out to the TensorFlow community and wider afield, and uh, and let those these everybody program their own things on it. But in order to do that, we need to try and get a minimum order from China. So we're doing a Kickstarter as well. So have a look for the details on that too. Awesome. We'll put the uh, links in the description after the show, and um, of course, you know as. You're one of the very handful of people who've experimented with hardware creation. Um, I'd love to hear any of your advice for people watching if they would like to get into this kind of space too, to make custom hardware that uses TensorFlow.js to power it, or you just TensorFlow even. Um, any words of wisdom you've learned from this experience? Yeah, definitely. I think the, the first thing you need, and we've learned it firsthand by having this first round of prototypes missing a, a key simple thing, like a, an interrupt command, a stop command, and then suddenly we're having to... So, really plan out your project and what you really want it to do really well in the beginning. Uh, and then you want to try and work with a development board. So you can probably see here, I've got some, so uh, this here, for example, is a development board. Um, it's um, ESP32 module. You could get Arduino, a Raspberry, any of these kind of development boards where you can buy modules and attach them to it, change the jumpers. Um, code in your firmware. So essentially you get a perfect development environment and then once you've got the development environment doing what you, you want, think about your casing, you can get that printed on a 3D printer for example. And then when you've got your casing and you've got your development environment, you can then create a thing called a Gerber file which is, uh, which is basically the what would be required for a printed circuit board and then you can get that manufactured in China, get a prototype and then try and get it out and about, which is a, the point where we are right now, trying to hopefully get a lot of people wanting to to buy these, uh, whether that be for fun development in the JS community or whether it's uh, people actually wanting to use it for various intended purposes, like recording tennis players. I see if there's some other hardware on the table there. What What is that? I see something on the So this there. here is, uh, this is very much uh, really early stages. So this has got like a, um, a cam here and we can screw this on to this device and then screw the attachment onto that. And then this will be loaded on with uh, TensorFlow Lite onto the microcontroller. And then we can connect that to the device instead of the smartphone to the device. And that will take care of the, um, obviously that will now recognize hopefully the, the person uh, in the view, which will mean it frees up the phone um, or you can mount anything on it, it could be a GoPro or, so you completely freeze up the phone so you could load up Facebook Live or um, or whatever. Nice. Or, yeah. Or yeah. Google That's Meet. Cool. So it's all on device, essentially, and then you can use the phone for its other purposes. <laughs> awesome. So thanks so much for coming on the show today, and I'm excited to see where this project goes. Thank you, Jason. It's been, been fun. Thank you.